إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم And the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours. وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ And everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation. وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدٍ My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we wanted to expand on a couple of the questions, one that we skipped and one that we needed to delve more into, that the Muslims should ask themselves daily if they want to live the Islamic day for their Islamic life. And the question that we have skipped that we need to mention is, هَلْ تَجَنَّبْتَ التَّكَبُّرْ وَالْإِعْتِزَازْ بِنَفْسِكَ Have you tried to avoid self-pride, arrogance, boasting, you know, laying out your things almost to pat yourself consistently on the back? عَنْ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر ولا يدخل النار من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من إيمان قال فقال له رجل إنه يعجبني إنه يعجبني أن أن يكون ثوبي حسنا ونعلي حسنا قال إن الله يحب الجمال ولكن الكبر من بطر من بطر الحق وغمط الناس. Have you questioned yourself about self pride, boasting, acting arrogant and being arrogant, elevating yourself above the people, remembering that on the day of judgment you will be made the smallest of the sizes of the ants, and the people will stampede over you. You boosted yourself up in this life. You made yourself something bigger than you were. And so you'll be made the most humiliating of forms on the day of resurrection. Abdullah he narrated that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, whoever has a speck, an atom, a mustard seed, something that in your hand you wouldn't even feel its weight, whoever has that much amount of pride or kibbut or arrogance in their heart, they will not be admitted into paradise. And whoever has a mustard seed, an atom's weight, a speck of faith in their heart, they will not be admitted into the hellfire. So a man said to the Prophet ﷺ, I like for my clothes to be nice and beautiful and for my sandals, my shoes to be nice and beautiful. So he said ﷺ, Indeed Allah loves beauty, but pride, arrogance is when you refuse the truth, when you reject the truth, when you don't want to hear the truth, and it's when you look down on the people and you belittle the people. As if you're automatically better than them, superior to them, higher in ranks than they are. This is what pride and arrogance is. The other question we had touched upon, but we mentioned it very quickly and we said we should make a whole khutbah dedicated to it. هَلْ 
اغتنمت ساعات الاستجابة ودعوت ودعوت الله بها. Have you spoke? Have you taken opportunity to supplicate to Allah during the hours of response? And this will be the focus of the remainder of the khutbah because we need Allah. Allah doesn't need us. We need to beg Allah and call upon Allah. Allah does not need to request anything of us more than what He has commanded us to do, and He has given to us in this deen. But have you taken the opportunity to supplicate to Allah instead of getting frustrated with your problems, instead of questioning why Allah may be doing this to you? Al Billah, we seek refuge with that because Allah's qadr is better than anything. So ask yourself daily: Have I made du'a to Allah during these hours? Allah said, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِي إِذَا دَعَانٌ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ Allah says what means, and when my slave asks me, asks you, O Muhammad وسلم, concerning me, then answer them that I am indeed near to them by my ilm, by my knowledge. Because we know Allah physically is above His creation and separate from His creation. كما قال في كتابه, has He said in His Quran, in His book, I am indeed near to them by my knowledge. I will respond to the invocations, to the du'a of the supplicant when he calls upon me. They don't have to go to a priest. They don't have to go to a saint. They don't have to go to an imam. They don't have to go to a special person. They can call on me themselves, even if they're the most, you know, uh, worst of forms on the earth. They can call and supplicate to Allah, to, to me directly. So let them obey me and believe in me so that they may be led aright. ثم قال الله ادعوا رب ربكم تضر عن وخفية إنه لا يحب المعتدين. And Allah says what means invoke your Lord, constantly call upon your Lord with humility and in secret, begging Him, realizing that you need Allah to to decree to decree something for it to happen. He likes not those who are aggressors. ثم قال الله قل ما يعبأ بكم ربي لولا دعاءكم فقد كذبتم فسوف يكون لزاما. And Allah says what means say O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم to the disbelievers, to the kafar, my Lord pays attention to you only because of your invocation to Him. This is the reason why Allah pays attention to even the kafar. It's just because of their du'a. And what about the du'a of His slaves, His servants, those who seek to please Him and follow His deen? But now you have indeed denied him, so the torment will be yours forever, inseparable with a permanent punishment. عن النعمان بن نشير رضي الله عنه قال عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الدعاء هو العبادة ثم قال وقال ربكم ادعوني استجب لكم عن النعمان بن بشير may Allah be pleased with him. He said that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said supplication, du'a. Asking of Allah, begging Allah, seeking from Allah, this is itself the essence of ibadah. This is worship. It is worship when you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this hadith, Sahafahu Shaykh al Albani, Rahimahullah, Shaykh al Albani, he authenticated it, and it's in the Sunnah of Abi Dawood. So, what are the times and the places where the dua is answered? Let us mention some more than we mentioned the previous week while reviewing those. <clears throat> Mentioning from them, first and foremost, Laylat al-Qadr. This is a night, khayrun min alfi shahr, better than a thousand months. Yet some of us, their only act of ibadah, their only day of making dua in the whole year, is on the day of Laylat al-Qadr. And instead of worshipping Allah in the last ten nights, seeking it on any night that it could be, they focus on just the 27th, because that seems to be the popular opinion. Although according to some of the ulama, Laylat al-Qadr can change in those last 10 nights every year. According to some of the ulama, it's on just the odd number of nights, and it can change any day of the year, on any time of that, those last 10 nights. So as Ramadan approaches, and we ask Allah, Allahumma balikhna Ramadan, that we see the month of Ramadan, put it in your, in your mindset from now that you're going to worship Allah throughout that month, throughout the days, and seek all the 10 nights of Laylat al-Qadr, and may Allah grant us to be of those who witness it. Dua in the depths of the night, the time before the dawn, before the fajr, the time when Allah descends to bestow the bounty upon His slaves. This is a time when many are snoring, asleep, seeking that rest because they stayed up late. It's not even usually for a good excuse. يَنْزِلُ رَبُّنَا تَبَارَكُ وَتَعَالَى فِي كُلِّ لَيْلَةٍ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ الدُّنْيَا حِينَ يَبْقَى ثُلَثَ اللَّيْلِ الْآخَرِ فَيَقُولْ مَنْ يَدْعُونِي فَأَسْتَجِيبَ لَهُ مَنْ يَسْأَلُنِي فَأَعْطِيَهُ مَنْ يَسْتَغْفِرُنِي فَأَغْفِرَ لَهُ 
This hadith which is in Sahih al-Bukhari, Allah, He descends in the lowest third of the night to, He descends in the last third of the night, Afwan, to meet the needs and, the, and the, relieve the distress of the believers. In this last third of the night, when Nazul, the descent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kal istawa, it's like the istawa of Allah. We don't ask how, nor do we try and think about it. And as we said, Imam Malik, he said, even Rahimahullah, he said, asking how to these things, this is an innovation, this is a bid'ah, and we should avoid it. It is knowledge for Allah to know. It's done in a manner which, which befits the majesty and the sovereignty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he descends and he says, who will call upon me so that I may answer him? Who is asking of me so I may give him? Who is seeking forgiveness from me so that I may forgive him? In the last third of the night, Instead of complaining, ask yourself, what can I do to get my dua accepted? Make dua during these special times. Make dua during these special times where the dua is accepted. Another time where the dua is accepted is after the prescribed prayers, but before taslim, as we will see. Dhul salawat al maktubat wa fi hadithi Abi Umama qal qila ya Rasulullah ayy dua asma. قال جوف الليل الآخر ودبر الصلوات المكتوبات رواه الترمذي وقد اختلف في دبر الصلوات هل هو قبل السلام أو بعده وأختار شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله وتنيزه ابن القيم رحمه الله أنه قبل السلام وقال الشيخ ابن تيمية رحمه الله ما ورد من الدعاء مقيدا بدبر الصلاة فهو قبل السلام وما ورد من الذكر مقيدا لدبر الصلاة فهو بعد الصلاة لقوله تعالى فإذا قضيتم الصلاة فاذكروا الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبكم According to this hadith of Abu Umama he mentions that it was said to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم O Messenger of Allah which dua is heard by Allah and accepted by Allah and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said it is the dua in the last third of the night as we just mentioned and following the prescribed prayers. This hadith is in the Sunan of Al-Tirmidhi and Shaykh Al-Albani, Hassanahu, he graded it as sound, as, as acceptable. The hadith. Now what does it mean? Dubr al-Salawat al-Maktubat. After the prescribed prayers. Because we've seen the Sunnah amongst the people, not amongst the deen. The Sunnah amongst the people is after the Salah, that after every prayer they make dua. After the prayer is done. After they've made their dhikr. And this is, this is not in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. What is meant by this, and this is why we have to go back to the scholars. This is why we have to go back to the ulama. This is why we have to learn the deen from them. Because we can't just read with the little knowledge of Arabic we may have, even if you're an Arab person of Arab tongue from the day you were born. Because there's understanding, there's fiqh behind all of this that is put together. So there was a difference of scholarly opinion whether dubra salawat al maktubat whether those prayers was it means after the prayer was done or before the taslim before you exit the prayer with assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah does it mean before the salam or after shaykh al islam ibn taymiyyah rahimahullah ibn al qayyim al jawziyah rahimahullah they were of the view that if it's dua it comes before the salam and look at us rushing the prayer but then we'll take time after the prayer sitting and making dua when your dua in the prayer is a time where it is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Shaykh ibn Uthaymeen, rahimahullah, may Allah have mercy on him, he said, what has been narrated of dua following the prayer is before the salam. So the dua you want to make should come before you exit the prayer. While you're still in tashahud, after your tashahud is done in your salawat ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that, you should make dua while your finger is pointing. And you're pointing towards the qibla. You make dua, and when you're done with your dua, you end the salah. As for dhikr, it comes after the salah ends. After the taslim. Then you say your subhanallah, your alhamdulillah, your la ilaha illallah, your allahu akbar. Then you read ayat al-kursi and the likes of these matters. And this is what was understood from the scholars. Because Allah said in the Quran, and when you have finished the salah, remember Allah standing, sitting down and laying down on your sides. This is with dhikr. So don't rush the prayer. Even if you can't stay long in sajda for some reason to make dua, make it after or right before you're going to exit the prayer with tasneem. Between the adhan and the iqama, 
قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يرد الدعاء بين الأذان والإقامة between the adhan and the aqama, many of us will chat, sit there, do nothing even. But the dua between the adhan and the aqama, it is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the rain falls, <coughs> and the nazul al ghayth kama fi hadithi sahl ibn Sa'ad, marfu'an ila al-nabih sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, natani ma turaddan ad-dua anda al-nada wa tahat al-matar. رواه أبو داود وصححه الشيخ الألباني رحمه الله. A time when the dua is accepted is when the rain falls. And again, this is a time where many people get gloomy, get a, want to get a blanket, sit, drink something warm, fall asleep. And when the rain is falling, this is barakah. This is a time of barakah. This is a time to make dua to your Lord. In the hadith of Sahab bin Sa'ad, attributed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said there are two dua which will not be rejected. Dua at the time of the adhan between the Adhan and the Aqama, and when it is raining. So focus on these things, remind yourself of them, even if it's when you're driving, even, you don't have to be in the masjid. You don't have to be facing the Qibla per se, if you can't be. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A certain time on Friday, فَقَدْ ذَقَرَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ فَقَالْ إِنَّ فِي الْجُمْعَةِ سَاعَةً لا يوافقها عبد مسلم يسأل الله فيها شيئا إلا أعطاه إياه. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said an authentic hadith. He said there is not an hour on Friday. عفوًا on Friday there is an hour when if a Muslim slave were asked to Allah ask Allah for something at that time Allah will give it to him. Allah will give it to him. And there are two opinions based on authentic narrations for this of which time it's likely to be. The first time that's potential is from the time of Asr till Maghrib, till the time the sun sets. For those who sit and they wait for the Maghrib, whether at home or in, their, in, their, uh, in the masjid, whether at home or in the masjid, making dua to their Lord, whether they're men or they're women, there's an hour where the dua is accepted on Friday. And it could potentially be between Asr and Maghrib. What are many of us doing at that time? Planning the, time, the, you know, planning the, the, the weekend plans, the Friday night plans. But there's a time when du'a is accepted. And we have the audacity sometimes to question why our du'a isn't being answered. But we're not making them at the right time sometimes. The second possible time is when the imam sits on the minbar to deliver the khutbah until he finishes the prayer. So du'a at either of these times is deserving of being answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When drinking the zamzam water, and this is the thing we all treasure to have, all treasure to taste, whether it's there or someone brings it back as a gift, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ مَا أُزَمْزَمَ لِمَا شُرِبَ لَهُ As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said in the authentic hadith in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad and in Sahih al-Jami' the authentic hadith, Zamzam water is what it is drunk for. And this hadith was narrated on Jabir رضي الله عنه. Zamzam water is what it is drunk for. So you can drink the Zamzam water and make dua at that time and Allah inshaAllah will accept your dua. When making sajda, and we mentioned the times that we constantly mention, taking your time in sajda. Because many people have the wrong thinking, you cannot make dua in sajda. And many people, they rush the sajda for whatever reason it may be. And it's a crime, it's a crime, it's a crime, it's a crime, it's a crime. Every time you see someone make sajda and they're pecking their head like a, a woodpecker pecks for food on the ground. It's a crime, take your time in that sajda. The dua, you're closest to your Lord, not physically again. As Allah, He's above His creation. فَوْقَ عَرْشَهُ On top of His arsh, on top of His throne. Separate from His creation. But His knowledge, His hearing, His seeing, it's everywhere. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِبْ فَأَكْثِرُ الدُّعَاءِ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, He said in the authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim, the closest a slave is to his or her Lord is when they're making sajda. So make dua, increase your dua in this time, in this place. So now you've been informed of two times where dua is accepted, yet we will still see the people rush it in sajda. And before you exit the prayer with taslim, taslim meaning assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah to the right and left. Those are two times the dua is accepted. The closest you are to your Lord when you're prostrating on the ground. And we remind the brothers and the sisters that the forearm and the elbow should not be touching the ground. Only the palms of the hand the knees, the toes, and the forehead and the nose with equal pressure. This is the correct sajda. 
that the forearm and the elbow should be off of the ground. That's the closest you are to Allah. Pick the person you love the most in your life, whether it's your wife or your husband, whether it's your children or your parents, the one you love the most in your life. You would do anything to hold on to them physically. You're closest to your Lord when you're in sajda. So if you would do that for any human being alive, and Allah should be above every human being alive or dead, then you should take your time in your sajda and make dua in it. When saying the dua of the noon, La ilaha illa an subhanaka inni kuntu min al-dhalimeen. This dua, the Prophet sallallahu he said, لَمْ يَدْعُوا بِهَا رَجُلٌ مُسْلِمٌ فِي شَيْءٍ قَدْ إِلَّا اسْتَجَابَ اللَّهُ لَهُ No one makes dua to Allah and adds this dua of the noon of Prophet Yunus alayhi salam that he made when he was stuck في بطن الحوت in the belly of the whale. He made the dua, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتْ O oh Allah, there is no deity, no God, no one, no thing worthy of worship except for you. لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتْ سُبْحَانَكَ Glorified and exalted be you. Perfect in every way. إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ Indeed, I have been of the wrongdoers. I am one of the wrongdoers. And the one who commits wrongdoings. No one adds this dua to the dua they make except that Allah will accept, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept the matter that you're asking for. No Muslim recites this dua concerning any matter, but Allah will answer him. So add this one. لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين. Add it to every dua you make, because Allah will answer your dua. If a calamity befalls, if a hardship befalls you, and you say إن لله وإن إليه راجعون. If you say this and you add to it, كما قال في الحديث ما من مسلم يصاب مصيبة فيفزع إلى ما أمر الله به من قوله إن لله وإن إليه راجعون اللهم عندك تسبت مصيبتي فأجرني فيها وعدني منها إلا آجاره الله عليها وعاضه خيرا منها رواه ابن ماجه وهذا حديث حسن The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said whoever says when they're stricken with a hardship or a calamity إن لله وإن إليه راجعون Truly to Allah we belong and to Him we return. And they add to it, with you I seek the reward for my calamity. So reward me for it and compensate me with it. Uh, compensate me for this calamity. But Allah will reward him for that and compensate him with something better than it. So instead of getting angry, instead of cursing, instead of thinking that you had control over the matter, remember your Lord with every hardship, every calamity. إِنَّ لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ even when the strap of the sandal of the Messenger of Allah would break, you would say it. This is not just a phrase at the time of death. But whenever someone in their calamity time, in their hardship time, recites this, Allah will accept his or her dua and replace it with something better. الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله غافر الذنوب جميعها إلا الشرك به والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam Always ask yourself if you're making dua to Allah Because he accepts the invocation of the one who makes dua to him But there are times, places where that dua is more accepted and we need to, instead of complaining, instead of saying why, instead of questioning, we need to call upon our Lord, especially in those times and in those places. We will end with a few more as a reminder for us so we can change the way we even worship, so we can worship and get closer to our Lord. The prayer of the people after the, the soul of the deceased has been taken. The prayer of the companions of the person after the soul of the deceased has been taken. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He said, إِنَّ الرُّوحَ إِذَا قُبِدَ تَبْعَهُ الْبَصَرِ فَضَجَّ نَاسٌ مِنْ أَهْلِهِ فَقَالْ لَا تَدْعُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ إِلَّا بِخَيْرٍ فَإِنَّ الْمَلَائِكَةِ يُؤْمِنُونَ يُؤْمِنُونَ عَلَىٰ مَا تَقُولُونَ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He said in the authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim, He said, when he entered upon Abu Salama, 
radiallahu anhu, after he had died and his eyes were opened, he closed the eyes and he said, when the soul is taken, the gaze follows it. When the soul is taken out of the body, the eyesight follows it. So the Prophet ﷺ closed the eyes. Some of his family got upset and said, and so he said to them, do not pray for anything but good for yourselves, for the angels say ameen to whatever you say. Many people in this time, they lose the benefit of that time to make dua for their loved one, so that the angels say ameen. They lose it because of, okay, the emotion is high, and you lost your loved one, and it's sadness. And you have a lot of sadness and, 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 and tears and the likes of this. But in that time, if you truly love your companion, and we said it at a janazah the previous week, if you truly love the one who has just died, then you do what was commanded of you. Ask forgiveness for your brother or your sister who passed away. And ask that they're firm in the questioning of the graves, because soon they will be questioned with the questions of the grave of who is your Lord, what is your religion, who was your prophet, and the likes of this matter. So when the soul of the deceased is taken, grip it together as much as you can and keep making dua for the one who is deceased because the angels are saying ameen to what you say. The prayer of the one who has been wronged. Again, when many of us are wronged, when we're hurt by somebody or wronged or oppressed, we quickly start thinking revenge. We quickly get angry. And we fail to realize that Allah is on the side of the Muslim, of the one who's been uh, oppressed. In the hadith that we have, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَسَلَمُ وَاتَّقُوا دَعْوَةَ الْمَظْلُومِ فَإِنَّهُ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ حِجَابٍ The Prophet ﷺ, he said, fear the prayer of the one who's been wrong. For there is, a bar- for there is no barrier between it and Allah. Allah, he accepts the dua of the one who was wronged. The one who's been oppressed. The one who has been taken advantage of wrongfully. Allah is going to listen to you. You have the best person on the Afwan, the best of beings on your side, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best to aid you and help you instead of letting the anger come to you and shaitan taking over you and then you doing something sinful and wronging the other person and then it's just a cycle of dhulm, of oppression and wrongdoing. There's no barrier between the dua of the one who's been wronged and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم دَعْوَةُ الْمَظْلُومِ مُسْتَجَابَةً مُسْتَجَابَةً وَإِنْ كَانَ فَاجِرَةً And the dua, the prayer, uh, the, the dua of the one, the supplication of the one who's been wronged will be answered even if he's an evildoer. Even if he's not someone who does good. Even if he's a sinner upon sinner. Even if he's a disbeliever. The one who's wronged, Allah will accept his or her dua. So be mindful of wronging others. And if you're wronged, turn to your Lord for comfort, guidance, and protection. The dua of a father for his child, for his benefit. Dua al-walid li-walidih, yani li-naf'ihi. Wa dua al-sa'im fi yawmi siyamihi. Wa da'wat al-musafir, faqad saha an al-nabihi, an nabiyyina sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, annahu qal, thalath da'watin la turad. Da'wat al-walid li-walidih, wa da'wat al-sa'im, wa da'wat al-musafir. The Prophet ﷺ, he said in the authentic hadith in Al Bayhaqi, there are three prayers that are not rejected. Three prayers that if you three dua you make, they will not be rejected by Allah. The prayer of a father for his child, whether the child is living or dead. If the father makes dua, if the mother makes dua for the children, Allah will accept that dua. So this is for the children to always be a service to their parents. Not to disobey them, to respect them and take care of them because every dua they make, Allah will accept if it's made for you. The dua of the fasting person, when the person is fasting, again, many of us, some of us sleep the whole day. They even miss the prayers. This is a time where your dua of the fasting person, while you're fasting, your dua is accepted. And the prayer of the traveler, when you're a musafir, again, we mentioned it last week, Many people, they start their travel, they put their AirPods in or whatever they're called, and they, in their earphones, and they go and they start listening to music, taking a nap, watching a movie, and doing the likes of this. When you're traveling, Allah accepts your dua. The prayer of a father against his child. So this is also a warning to not be disobedient to your parents, to love them and be kind to them, to serve them, to be patient with them, whether they're young in age or older in age. According to the Sahih Hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, ثلاث دعوات مستجابات دعوة المظلوم 
ودعوة المسافر ودعوة الوالد على ولده. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in the authentic hadith in the Sunnah of the Tirmidhi, there are three prayers that will be answered. The prayer of the one who's been wronged, the prayer of the traveler, and the prayer of a father against his child. Or maybe that child doing things bad to them, not taking care of them, neglecting them, being rude to them, and the likes of these matters. So this is a warning to all of us that the prayer of the parents regarding the children is accepted, whether for or against them. The dua of a righteous per- person, child for their parents. And we have this in the authentic hadith, إِذَا مَاتِ الْإِنسَانِ انْقَطَعَ عَمَلَهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثلاث. That when a person dies, all of their deeds come to an end except for three. صَدَقَةٍ جَارِيَةٍ The ongoing charity, the charity with ben- which benefits after their death. عِلْمٍ يَنْتَفِعُ بِهِ Knowledge which benefits the people after he has passed away. It's still there. He bought some books, authentic books of hadith, and gave them to someone who reads from them and benefits them. This is, this is ajr for you. وَوَلَدٍ صَالِحٍ يَدْعُوا لَهُ And the third thing, and maybe the most important, a righteous child who makes dua for his or her mother or father. So the child being raised to know those ad'iya, those, those uh, supplications for their parents, and making that for their parents, this is the dua Allah will accept subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the final one, the dua when getting up from the night's sleep and saying this dua, when you wake up from sleep, right away remembering Allah, لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك له الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير الحمد لله سبحان الله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله The one who wakes up and says this ثم قال الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اغفر لي Then that person says اللهم اغفر لي they after, after they say that dhikr they say Oh Allah forgive me Oh da'a or they make dua for anything and if this person makes that dua for anything after saying this, asking for forgiveness or for any dua, their dua will be accepted. And if they make wudu and pray after that, then their prayer will also be accepted. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, there are many times where dua is accepted more than at other times. Let us take advantage of those. They are gifts, they are gems, they are pearls from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to get our dua answered. When we're in need, when we need to beg on Allah the most, when we need the most support from Allah, the most guidance from Allah, the most comfort and consolement from Allah, and those times have been provided. Yet many of us squander them, and I advise myself first, because of the rapidness of this dunya. So beware of these things, and let us supplicate to our Lord, because it is, as we said, dua هو العبادة. Dua is the essence of worship. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم والاموات انك انت سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك سبحان ربك رب العزه اما يصفون وسلاما على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصل اللهم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين